Today I'm going to try to do a quick unscripted, unprepared video on how to align the tape head azimuth on the Commodore dataset. First I'll talk about how to adjust it by ear like I used to do when I was a kid. And then I'll break out the oscilloscope and see if I can do it the right way. So before I get started I just want to say you shouldn't adjust the azimuth unless you absolutely have to. The azimuth is set at the factory and it's correct. So unless someone else has broken the thread lock on the azimuth adjust screw, someone else has been in there messing with it and changing the azimuth, there's no reason for you to change it. You may have a tape that won't load. That doesn't mean that it's a bad azimuth adjustment. And even if it is, the tape was recorded on a machine that had a bad azimuth. So you should think twice about actually changing yours just to match a bad tape. It's best to just leave it at the factory adjustment, in my opinion. That being said, this one, I know I messed up a lot when I was a kid. First I'll show you how to adjust a head azimuth on an audio recorder by ear, then we'll move on to the data set. An audio recorder like this Sanyo doesn't have a hole here, but it does have a little notch there, and you can't see the azimuth adjust screw until you press play to bring the head forward. Now you can see the adjustment screw right here. You'll want to play something that has some treble to it so you can hear the loss of high frequencies. I'm going to adjust it off axis. Hopefully you can hear how it's muddy now. I'm going to turn it back and you'll hear it brighten up. If I keep going too far, it gets muddy again. And that should be right about where it should be, nice and bright. So how can you hear the audio output from a Commodore data set? Well, what I used to do when I was a kid, and I definitely do not recommend doing this, I used to shove some wires into the contact connectors here, but that only succeeded in uh, damaging these contacts and I had to replace them. What I would recommend is one of these. This is an MP32C64, but it's a particular version that has a pass-through for a real data set. And it passes the audio output from the data set here. Another alternative is to use something like this data set adapter that I made. Here is your plus five volts and ground. Pin three is the motor and pin four is your read pin or the audio output, if you can call it audio. So you could tap a wire onto this pin here and hook it up to a powered speaker or a pair of headphones. Fair warning, it's very loud. It's a five volt level, which is way higher than typical audio device. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this so I can pipe the audio directly out into a powered speaker. For this demonstration, I'm going to be plugging in my uh, Zoom recorder so I can get a direct recording of this. And I can plug in these powered speakers here to the headphone output on the Zoom. Alternatively, if you want to plug in headphones directly while you're doing this, you're going to need something like this inline headphone volume control because this is really loud. Plug in the data set and then plug this into the back of my pet. Okay, a warning here. This sound is not only very loud, it's grating and probably somewhat annoying. So you want to stand by your volume control. I'm going to do my best to normalize this in post, but you're probably still going to want to turn the volume down. That's the lead in tone. That's the file header, just the name of the file. Okay, so now I'm going to adjust it off axis. You hear the change? I'm taking it back. I'm going off axis the other way. It's quite a few turns until you can hear it. That's wrong. That's better. 
I'm going to count the number of turns from wrong That's definitely wrong, so we're right about in here. I'm going to go extreme so you can hear the difference. That's definitely bad. That sounds okay. And that's getting bad again. We just need to back it off from where it sounds bad and see how it works. And there you go. The alignment's probably not perfect, of course, but it's close enough to get the program to load. Now, some of you are probably curious what an audio tape sounds like when you play it through a Commodore data set. So here you go. I know someone out there is saying, that's fine for a 1530, but what about C2N? It doesn't have an azimuth adjust hole. Well, I'll show you. The C2N doesn't have an adjustment hole, and even with the lid open, there's still no way to reach the azimuth adjustment screw here. I have seen pictures of people who have drilled holes in theirs, but I would never do something like that. So we're going to have to take it apart. Three screws. And there are a few screws actually that hold the mechanics to the top half of the shell. So, because we need to operate this while it's disassembled, and you can't just lay it down here, or you might end up rubbing on the belt. So I would recommend putting it in the case here while you operate it. There are two screws here on the head mount. Uh, so which one's the azimuth adjustment screw? Well, it's the one with the spring underneath it, so I can get an angle on it here. You should see that this screw here has a spring underneath it, and the other one is screwed down flat to the plastic. So you can put a tape in and press play. There are a couple of things here. These two metal protrusions here hold the tape up in the right position and these two here are the alignment pins so the alignments the same whether you have the top shell on or not the tape will sit down onto those pins and the position will hold one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is that when you're doing an azimuth adjustment, you want to make sure that you're using a tape that you know was written on a properly aligned deck. You don't want to use a tape that you made yourself unless your goal is simply to align it to that specific tape. Ideally, you want to use a calibration tape that are 
sold specifically for the purpose of head alignment, but those are hard to come by. So you can use factory made tapes as long as you can be reasonably sure that the uh, factory they were produced in had properly aligned heads. Another thing to remember is to use a non-magnetic screwdriver. If you're using a metallic screwdriver, make sure that it's been properly demagnetized. One thing to note about this MP3 to C64 is that the data line initially goes to this resistor to reduce the level, then it goes to a potentiometer so you can adjust the volume, and it goes through a capacitor. So the square waves coming out of the data set are going to be fairly rounded off coming through here. Here's a typical program on tape. First you have the lead-in tone. That's the file header, and the file header repeats. Then another short lead-in tone, then the actual data. The pulse width is varying here. A long duration between two pulses is a one, and a short duration between two pulses is a zero. That chirp that you just heard right there is the break between the two halves. The program is recorded twice. The adjustment procedure says to connect the scope to test point 1 on early decks or to pin 7 of IC1 on later versions. Then we're going to adjust the azimuth screw for maximum output. I've tacked the wires on here with a soldering iron just to be able to get to them while it's operating. This is IC1 right here. Pin 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, and I just tacked the wire on up here because it was easier. And pin 7 on that chip is the output of the very first op amp. If we connect the scope up directly to the tape heads, the signal's pretty small and kind of gets lost in the noise. But uh, in this case, we should have, uh, still have a fairly analog signal. There's the lead in tone. And I'm going to tweak the screw here to see how that affects the amplitude. And it's definitely getting smaller now. Well within two divisions. We're back the other direction and we're peaking above two divisions. Okay. Let's give this a try. Press play on the tape. And... With the heads aligned from before, we're looking at about 50 millivolts peak to peak on the lead in tone. File header, lead in tone, file data. So now I'm going to try to adjust it for peak volume. I'm going clockwise a quarter turn. It looks like we've peaked up a little bit. Clockwise, another quarter turn, about 100 millivolts. Clockwise, another quarter turn, we're going down. And another quarter turn, you can hear it starting to distort. So I'm going to back up. And another quarter turn, about 100 millivolts peak to peak. If I go another quarter turn counterclockwise, we're going down again. So back clockwise a quarter turn and there we go. So there we're at about 58 millivolts on, 54 millivolts on lead-in tone. If I go an eighth of a turn, it's gone down. Back to about 50. And the data is about 88. Eighth of a turn down, 90. Quarter turn counterclockwise.
So at the output of this op amp, I think optimal is going to be about 50 millivolts peak to peak on the lead-in tone. And somewhere around 100 millivolts peak to peak on the data. Let's see how well does it load from this tape. Well, I guess that's it for now. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching.